I've stood on hundreds of start lines all over the world with the very best athletes in the world. My sport is triathlon, swim, bike, run. Some races are as short as an hour and others as long as 17 hours. And my specialty was the Ironman, which is a 3.8 kilometer swim, 180 kilometer bike ride, followed by a marathon. And this is my office, right there. <laughs> the start line of the Hawaii Ironman World Championships. I'm in there. I literally jumped into that sea of chaos, risking my dreams, risking everything vulnerable to pressure and expectation. And yet, I'm completely in control. People grew accustomed to me winning the race, and they'd always say, oh, yeah, you're going to win again. Oh, yeah, you're going to win again. I'm like, well, you know, I, I have to still go through and do the race. If I could win on good wishes alone, I would have stacks and stacks of victories. These people are so kind. And there was a lot of pressure to perform and pressure to win. And I never looked at pressure as a bad thing. I had pressure because I had been successful. So to wish for no pressure would be to wish for no success. And that didn't make sense to me. So I accepted pressure. And I literally said to myself, pressure really is people just wishing me well. They really want me to do well. And that's how I would handle it. Every Ironman is a challenge. There's never an easy race. There's always something that's difficult. Well, this particular race, the theme of the day was overcoming adversity every step of the way. Before the race, I'm running to the start of the race, and it's through a park. I step on a thumbtack, and I tear my racing suit. I had a suit over top of this suit that went down to here. So I got this thumbtack in the bottom of my suit, of my foot. I lift up my foot. I pull out the thumbtack. I stick it in a fence. I look at my suit, and I think, well, I think that'll stay OK for nine hours and away I went. My race could have been done right there. No way. There was nothing going to deviate me from what I needed to do. I got into the swim, 2,500 athletes in the swim. The gun goes off. It's very important to swim as close to other athletes as possible because they break the, the wake of the water for you so you can actually get a nice draft. Stay with your competitors. Very aggressive at the start. I get in with a great group. For the first time in 20 years of racing, I get the <laughs> elbow to the eye, the goggles go into the face. I have to stop to let the water out. We we're just within a few hundred meters of the start. And I remember continuing the swim. I've now lost the people I was swimming with. And I thought to myself, I think today's going to be the race where you really prove that you're a champion. Anybody can do good when the going's good. A true champion can do well despite adversity. Today's that day. This is not going to be easy. This is the theme for the day. Got out of the swim. I was a little further back than I would have liked. Got onto the bike ride. You carry your nutrition on the bike. There are aid stations where you can get uh, sugar, salt, and water. You get Gatorade. You can get power bars, etc. But essentially, the key to winning an Ironman or getting to the finish line is a combination of sugar, salt, and water. You need sugar to fuel your muscles. You need salt as an electrolyte because you're sweating and you need water for hydration, sugar, salt, and water. So I used to carry a concentrated bottle of my special super duper electrolyte mix on my bike. And I used to sort of blend it. I had a front water bottle cage, and I'd blend it. So I never needed to take anything else on the course, any other fluids, et cetera, because you just don't know how it's going to sit with your stomach. So I'm in Australia. The roads are notoriously quite bumpy in Australia. We have Australians here, so they know what I'm talking about. And I hit some potholes and breaks in the road. And sure enough, I lose my super duper electrolyte, beautifully blended bottle. So there's my nutrition gone for the race. I have other bottles, but that's my safeguard. And I'm thinking, no problem. No problem. Let's, the best problem solver wins. That's what's going to happen today. A true champion has to find their way. So I thought, okay, I have a special needs station where I can call out my number and I can get my own special selection of, of things that I've prepared. So I get to the special needs station that has just for my bottles and I'm calling out my number, 31, 31, 31, and they're fumbling, 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 and I take responsibility. I didn't slow down. I thought they'd have it ready, which they typically do. I missed it, kept going. 
like, no problem. The theme of the day is adversity. I will find a way where there is no way. I will be successful. So I decided, OK, time to be a chemist. What do you need to fuel your body? Sugar, salt, and water. Sugar. I will take an extra gel per hour. Power gel is this gooey little food that's very easily digestible. I'm going to get more sugar by taking in an extra power gel per hour. Water I can get at the aid stations. Salt, I have salt pills in my pocket. I'll take, or in my little uh, fuel belt, I'll take an extra salt pill every hour. So I'm becoming a little chemist, part-time athlete, as I'm doing this Ironman, sugar, salt, and water. Continued on, got onto the run, probably not feeling as good as I'd like to. I was behind on the marathon, got off the bike probably in around fourth or fifth ran the marathon the best I could, as hard as I could, keeping with that theme. Be a champion. Find a way. Find a way to win. A champion always finds a way. And regardless, I just needed to get to the finish line. That would be a victory. If I actually won the thing, that would be icing on the cake. But I would be so proud of myself for battling against these obstacles. Obstacles that would shut you down any other time. All you had to do was let one part of your brain say, that's a good excuse. That's a good excuse. There are no excuses. We are responsible for ourselves. A champion is responsible for themselves to find success despite adversity. I was able to catch the people ahead and win the race in spite of. And so no matter what obstacles are facing you, there is a way. And you all have that ammunition within you. I have cystic fibrosis. It's a lung disease that you're born with that causes abnormal mucus growth in your lungs. And what that does is it means that you get frequent lung infections that are chronic, which diminishes your lung capacity, can lead to hospitalizations, lung transplants. The median survival age for cystic fibrosis is, used to be 35. It's now up and around the 50s. And so there's many adults living with cystic fibrosis. And I have cystic fibrosis. And I use my lungs for my sport. And yet I can positively say to you that I am blessed with two wonderful gifts, the gift of sport and the gift of cystic fibrosis, two things that would never be in the same sentence. If you want to do sport, you pretty much don't want to have cystic fibrosis. And if you have cystic fibrosis, you're probably not doing a whole lot of sport. And yet I've been blessed with very good health. And yes, I get sick. I've had illness where I've had to be on intravenous antibiotics for several weeks. At this stage in my career, it was difficult. I was on IV for five weeks, and I was telling some people over lunch that during that time, I understood what it must feel like for an intellect to not be able to read all of a sudden, or a someone who plays the piano to not be able to play anymore. My lung capacity had gone down to 55%. You have two lungs. One lung is 50%. So I was essentially working off of one lung. So there's been difficulty. And yet, I, I would never have wished to not have cystic fibrosis because it gave me purpose. Every time I got on the start line, I was racing for higher purpose. It wasn't always that way. There were times I never wanted anyone to know. Early in my career, I didn't want one single person to know I had cystic fibrosis because I didn't want an asterisk beside my name. Lisa won, and she's got cystic fibrosis. Or Lisa has cystic fibrosis. By the way, she won that race. I didn't want excuses. I own who I am. I'm going to be me the best I can be me, and that's with cystic fibrosis. I didn't want the built-in excuse. It wasn't until I had had some success where I realized, OK, now I have a platform. And I know now that I can offer hope to families with CF. Because if you have disease in your family and you find one single person who has survived and lived well, that's hope, no matter what. And so for a parent, of a child born with cystic fibrosis, that gives them fuel for a wonderful life. And so that became so important to me.